Word up, my bitches and bitchettes. Is I, the great one himself. Free reign, no adult supervision. Randy isn't here because I'm back. I'm doing one of these on my time. This is some more of the pile on the floor. In case you're wondering, the pile on the floor is not getting any smaller in any significant fucking measure whatsoever. I also picked up the CSU is back in session. All the kids are back here in Fort Collins. Which is good because now there's a lot of cute girls running around again. And also it's good because the Colleg Collegian has come out again so I can start picking up the college newspaper and finding things to make fun of. I got an issue of it from today, but I don't think there's anything in here really worth making fun of. There's a picture of a cute volleyball player though, so I just like cute volleyball player photos. And you girls out there that are cute volleyball players, feel free to send me pictures of you in your cute little volleyball player uniform. That shit makes me hot. I love that. And oh god, the fucking... For those of you who care about corporations, the Broncos won some football game, and so now the Broncos are going to the Super Bowl, and oh fucking Jesus Christ, on a stick. People around here, you know, go oh, go, oh my god, it's the Broncos. Some of you may watch South Park, and on South Park when you see you know, the way everybody is nuts about the Broncos, you may think that's an exaggeration. I'm here to tell you, it's not, okay, it's not. People around here, my God, I guarantee you there are men in this town who fucking masturbate while watching the fucking Broncos games. I've never seen, I've never seen just the the intensity that these people put into, and I've explained this before about how football teams are just corporations and about how the Super Bowl is rigged because the rich people who own the football franchise, the NFL franchise, are not going to allow the disposition of all that money to be randomly determined by some people who barely made it out of college with a 2.0 GPA, you know, running up and down a field with a ball. So anyhow, just throwing that out. Anyhow, the Broncos and it's Washington. Of course, there's all the comments. Hey, look, the two states that legalized marijuana are going to the Super Bowl. Oh, Super Bowl. Bowl. Get it? Oh, oh, slap your knees, kids. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, my goodness. Oh, marijuana humor. Yes. It's, it's a stoner joke. Oh, Yes. All right. I am the great one himself. This is Stating the Obvious Podcast from the Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. You can send email. You can send pictures of yourself if you're a cute girl in your volleyball outfit. That would, yes, that, yes, yes, that is highly encouraged. Okay, cute pictures of cute girls in cute volleyball outfits, 100 fucking percent encouraged. You can send those. Two, God, that's uh, G-O-D, I can't spell. <laughs> How do you spell God? As I always say, that's dog spelled backwards. G-O-D at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com. So yes, send your cute volleyball girl pictures. And yeah, it has to be you in the picture. You can't like download a picture of a cute volleyball girl off the fucking internet and send it to me, okay? It has to be a picture of you. You have to be a cute volleyball playing girl. Or you can send me money. I always send money. James Bond. I'm watching all the James Bond movies. I've talked about that before. Just finished the second Timothy Dalton. Interesting thing. God, I can't remember their names. I didn't, I'm not going to worry about it. So as I was watching the early ones, I said that Jane Seymour in Live and Let Die with Sean Connery was like the hottest Bond girl so far. Her like, she's just gorgeous. Oh, she's so gorgeous in that movie. And then there's like this dearth. There's all these Bond girls, none of which really did anything for me. Timothy Dalton, and I think he only did the two because the next one up on the list is Goldeneye. And I think Goldeneye is the first Pierce Bronson James Bond movie. I don't remember for sure. I haven't loaded it up yet in the DVD player, so I don't know. But it seems like it was. 
And then just from looking at my collection, so then Pierce Bronson apparently only did four, if that's true, because there's Golden Eye, and then there's three more, then there's the one that I know has the new blonde guy. Oh, and I started watching season three of Spartacus too. Oh, yes, Spartacus. And there's a new hot chick in there too. I always love hot chicks. All right, anyway, back to James Bond. So I think, and I could be wrong, but I think Timothy Dalton only had two movies. And I know he got a lot of flack because people didn't, a lot of people did not like him as James Bond. I thought Timothy Dalton was, I mean, I thought he was an adequate James Bond. He, you know, anyway, I didn't see that big of a problem with him. But anyhow, he did have the two hottest Bond chicks, like of that whole, like all the Roger Moore Bond chicks, there was Holly Goodhart in Moonraker. She was kind of cute. But she was a CIA agent, so I mean, she was a fucking federal agent. She was a statist, like like James Bond isn't a fucking statist. He kills people for the state. But anyhow, but Timothy Dalton had the two hottie pies in Living Daylights. He had the little blonde hottie pie, the Eastern European looking hottie pie, whose name I don't know, but she the cello player, the blonde cello player. She is gorgeous. And then... In his second movie, he had the American chick who flew the airplanes, and and she was really hot when the show when she first came into the James Bond movie because she actually had hair. And then they went down south, and she was going to be his executive secretary. That's the cover, yada yada yada. And she went out, and she got this fucking little boy buzz cut. And recently, on and she, after that, I mean, she still had a great body, but the fucking buzz cut just looked nasty. Recently, on Return of Kings website, yes, talking about Return of Kings again, they did a, somebody wrote a post, I think it was Tutankhamus, but I could be wrong, wrote a post about how women who have really short hair are not just not attractive, because they're not attractive, but they're emotionally damaged, and that right there just made me think about that, because yeah, she was really hot, and then she gets a haircut, and now she's not really hot anymore, so girl, stop fucking cutting your hair short, I know so many chicks, and their hair keeps getting shorter, and shorter, and shorter, and they keep becoming more and more emotionally damaged, it's like the girl that I talked about in a previous edition, who at 16 started going to college parties, and hanging out with older college guys, and going to parties in other towns with them, whatever the fuck that means, you know, and who's probably fucking everything that moves, whatever, and in the short time that I've known her, I've known her for maybe a year, less than a year, actually, I'm not really sure, in the time that I've known her, her hair gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. And what? Hold on. Good thing I'm pausing on this. I just got a text about something that I thought was happening next fucking week. What the hell is this? Pause. Yes, I love it when I'm not the person who's fucking up. The email I have says that this meeting is next Wednesday, not this Wednesday. Yes! All right, always, always a good day when I'm not the one being stupid. Okay, what was I talking about? James Bond, short hair. Yes, girls with short hair being damaged. Yes, the girl I know who is running around and 16, 17 years old now, boinking older guys at college parties. Oh, I'm sorry, she's, I don't know for a fact she's randomly fucking them. I should refrain from making assumptions. But the point is, every time I see her, her hair gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And the more I find out about her, the scarier she becomes. Not just throwing that out. All right. Anyhow, the pile on the floor. What do we got here? What's on top? Oh, these are brilliant. This is, this is of course, ancient. This is from 2011, back in the day. <coughs> Since I'm pausing the recording this time around and not doing as one would do a live radio show, I actually pause while I'm coughing my lungs up. All right, this is brilliant. I haven't heard anything about this. So, Terminator. Here we go. 
This is from the This Week magazine. This is October 21st, 2011. The U.S. fleet of military drones has been infected by a computer virus that records pilots every keystroke as they remotely fly missions over war zones. Wired.com reported last week. The military said the virus first detected at uh, Creech Creek? Creech Air Force Base late last month. Creech Air Force Base is in Nevada. Hasn't stopped it from conducting missions, such as the recent airstrikes in Yemen that killed al-Qaeda protester Anwar al akawali or however you say it. Yes, and it hasn't stopped the government from using the drones to kill those, what was it, 12 people who were driving in their cars to go to a wedding because they looked like a military convoy. It's good to know the military isn't letting something like a computer virus in their remote-controlled robotic killing machines stop them from murdering people. Let me tell you something. I feel a lot safer right now. I feel much, much safer knowing that Hussein Obama is murdering brown people in foreign countries to protect me. It makes me feel really good. And there haven't been any confirmed instances. No, confirmed ones, of course, because the government and the military would, of course, never keep any secrets, right? There have been no confirmed instances of information being transmitted to outside sources, but the bug has stubbornly resisted security specialists' attempts to clear it from Creech's computers. Quote, we keep wiping it off and it keeps coming back, unquote, said a source familiar with the virus. Security experts believe the bug entered the network when the Air Force transferred data between computers with an external hard drive. The military is investigating whether the virus was introduced intentionally or accidentally. Well, I'm pretty sure all computer viruses would be intentional. And again, this shows you the intelligence of the people whom you think should have nuclear weapons and remote-controlled robots and be able to kill people whenever they feel like it. Terminator. Yes, the machines are coming. Meanwhile, in Seattle, this is the same page from the same magazine, Superhero arrested. An amateur superhero was arrested for assault last week after he allegedly pepper sprayed a group of people outside of a nightclub. Self-styled vigilante, vigilante, Benjamin Fodor, who goes by the name Phoenix Jones, claims he was breaking up a fight, but Seattle police say Fendor started the scuffle. Fodor, whatever, F-O-D-O-R. A mixed martial arts fighter, Fodor is a member of the Rain City Superhero Movement, a group of masked crime fighters who patrol the streets of the city like comic book characters. Seattle police have warned the costume crusaders to dial 911 rather than take matters into their own hands. Quote, It's fine if people want to dress up and walk around, but if you're deploying pepper spray on people on the street, you have to have a good reason to do it or you will be arrested, said Seattle police spokesman Mark Jameson. Now, of course, if your costume is a police costume, you can shoot pepper spray in people's faces. You don't have to go... Ask the... Occupy Wall Street hippies how that pepper spray thing works. You don't, you know, if you have a police costume, if that's the kind of costume you're wearing, you can pepper spray whoever the fuck you want. You can even shoot them. You can do goddamn near anything. It's all about wearing the right costume. Just got the confirming text. Yes, it is next week. I was not wrong. Yes. Oh, damn. I love it. All right, let's talk about lawsuits. White House sued over ozone rules. Environmental groups, remember this is from years ago. Environmental groups sued the Obama administration this week over its decision to scrap planned limits on ozone pollution. The Environmental Protection Agency has developed tighter standards on smog, but the White House abandoned those plans last month, saying they would create, quote, needless uncertainty, unquote, for businesses in the struggling economy. Environmentalists accused the White House of catering to business interests in order to win support for the 2012 re-election campaign. Quote, instead of protecting people's lungs as the law requires, this administration based its decision on politics, unquote, said an attorney for Earth Justice. Wait, hold it. Wait, wait. <laughs> Politicians base their actions on politics? Wait, no, hold on. No, this can't be right. 
Obama's trying to get reelected. <laughs> what? That's fucking. <laughs> That's, that's fucking crazy talk. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, man, you people are clueless. Oh, fucking Christ on a stick. A Michigan woman is suing the distributors of the hit movie Drive, claiming that it contains less driving than the trailer would suggest. <laughs> oh, my God. I bet she watches Honey Boo Boo also. Drive, a critically acclaimed thriller, features several car chases, but that wasn't enough for Sarah Deming, whose lawsuit complains that Drive's, quote, misleading movie trailer, unquote, made it seem, open quote, very similar to the Fast and the Furious or similar series of movies, unquote. Suing the distributors of the movie because it didn't have enough car chases in it. Oh my God. If, you know, if only we could, if only there was a way to get financial compensation from, it's like, okay, your movie had no fucking coherent plot and the plot had holes in it, you could drive a semi-truck through, and the dialogue was fucking terrible. Can we sue the fuck out of you? That would actually, if you, if there was a way that people could get paid if they had to sit through a bad movie, like, think of all the money that would, all the money, well, all the people, all the money that would have been made by people, or all the people that would have made money watching Prometheus. I mean, holy shit fest, Batman. I mean, the, it looked beautiful. Because Ridley Scott directed it. How could it not look beautiful? But the dialogue and the characters, such as they were, and the the, the non-existent coherent plot, I mean, they would, he would, they would have had to pay people a shit ton of money for watching that motherfucking film. A woman in Texas is suing police, alleging that after her arrest for a traffic violation, she was forced to listen to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> okay, okay. Cruel and unusual punishment. to force you to listen to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> oh. oh. Bridget Nickerson Boyd, who is African American, <laughs> says, that, I'm sorry, man, that is not an African American name. I'm from the South. I'm from Texas. I don't know. Bridget Nickerson Boyd? That sounds like some hoity twitty rich bitch from California. <sighs> who is African American says that an officer unjustly arrested her and handcuffed her in a police car where she had to listen to the conservative radio host quote make derogatory comments about black people unquote <laughs> so she's not suing because she was falsely arrested no 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 <laughs> Uh, unjustly arrested is what it says, actually. But she's suing because she had to listen to Rush Limbaugh. And this perfectly illustrates what I've said before about how statist, whether they're left-wing statist, right-wing statist, whatever kind of statist you're dealing with, they cannot handle any kind of dissent from their opinions. If your opinion is not the same as their opinion, to them this is a crime, and you're going to have to be punished and somebody should be sued because, oh my God, she had to listen to Rush Limbaugh. If you're being arrested, maybe you should have bigger problems than whatever's on the fucking radio in the squad car. Meanwhile, speaking of women... Oh, that's interesting. According to this, oh, I didn't even notice this, the Westboro Baptist Church, this has nothing to do with women, this is something else. The Westboro Baptist Church, those are the, for those of you who don't know, those are the God hates fags guys, they're the ones who stand with the signs and say God hates fags. After the radical church said Steve Jobs was going to hell and called for a protest at its funeral, at the bottom of the church's 
tweeted call for a protest, it said, via Twitter for iPhone. The church later explained that, quote, God created the iPhone, unquote, not Steve Jobs. Well, if God's creating iPhones, why doesn't God create some motherfucking food for all the people that are hungry? Oh, that's right. Because God can't interfere. Free will and all that other shit. All right, anyway. Back to women. Because I like women's backs, especially their backsides, their little bottoms, especially if they're cute volleyball playing girls and they're wearing those little volleyball costumes. Oh, fuck yeah, costumes. <sighs> uniforms. They're called uniforms, dumbass. It's not a costume. A costume is what a police officer wears. I had to go to a presentation given by a police officer about customer service, which had some really good information in it, but the the whole part where it was being delivered to me by a fascist piece of shit on the SWAT team who has murdered other humans while he was carrying his gun in a situation where I was not allowed to carry a gun, that part of it was disgusting and filthy and offensive. The actual information, had it been presented by somebody who was not a murderer, would have been a you know, easier to receive. But then again, he's got a costume. He can kill whoever the fuck he wants. All right. Because that's you statist put up with it. Yes. Because the beatings will continue as long as you tolerate them. True love. After Columbia... It's a bad week for true love. After Columbia University researchers found that a single woman consider that single women consider overweight men more attractive if they are wealthy. Now, here's a news flash for you. If you have more money, you can be less attract you can be overweight and get women. I know this is a fucking news flash. This is a fucking news flash. For each 10% increase in body mass index, a single man must get a 2% raise in salary to stay in the same dating pool. And for it doesn't actually reference the study itself, so I can't check up to see exactly how all this was calculated and yada, 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 which is what I would like to do. But here's the newsflash part. If you're fat and you're a man, you got to make more money in order to get girls to compensate it. Wow. Nobody knew that. Holy shit. Wait, you mean women are attracted to money? What the fuck? No. No way. Quote from Elizabeth Warren, Massachusetts State, Massachusetts State Senate candidate. Quote, there is nobody in this country who got rich on his own. Unquote. Hmm. And that's true. Nobody in this country did get rich on their own. And this is what the, the left-wing statists who don't understand economics, well, the right-wing statists don't actually understand economics either, but they get it a little bit better. This is what those of you who don't understand economics, you're called the 99%. This is what you don't understand. No, it's true. Nobody in this country got rich on their own. Because all the money, and I didn't say, I think it was Larry Wingate that actually said this in this particular exact way. And if I'm wrong, it wasn't Larry, it was somebody else. But I, I'm totally stealing this. Somebody else said this. All the money you will ever have in your life right now belongs to somebody else. You get money from them by doing things for them, by exchanging value, by creating value. So yes, this is absolutely true. Everyone who's gotten rich did not do that on their own because they had these other people called customers. And those people gave their money to the person who is rich because the person who is rich provided them with a service or solved a problem for them. The person who is now rich did something people were willing to exchange value for in most cases. Now, yes, there are a lot of people who make money such as police officers who simply kill people. They don't provide any value, but they get paid because of taxation. Everybody who works for the government they're not providing value. Their money is coming from taxation, which comes at the barrel of a gun. But in a market, you to get money from somebody else where you can't, you know, when you can't take the money away from them in the form of taxes, and when you can't put them in prison if they don't pay the taxes, you have to create value for other people so they will give you money in return for the value you're creating. 
So yes, this is absolutely true. Nobody except people who work for the government and defense contractors and the prison industrial complex and you know, the public school systems and the colleges. But other than those, which are all part of the state, aka the cathedral, the people outside of the state, outside of the cathedral, those of us in the market, yeah, we're making money because of other people. You can't make money, you can't create wealth without other people exchanging wealth with you. The fact that this even has to be explained is just ex shows how fucking pathetic you people are. This is, what, this is one of those borderline things. This is a op-ed piece from Houston newspaper, Houston Chronicle, Houston, yes, Houston Chronicle. The headline is, No Logic to Putting Men in Charge of Reproductive Rights. Policies, re policies Result in More Babies Born Out of Wedlock. So it starts off with, How did men get elected to office and decide themselves to be moral arbitrators? Well, they got elected to office because you sheep all voted for them and they became moral arbitrators because when people in the government declare what is and isn't morally correct, you people obey. Right, it's like the, when the Indians were exterminated by the government, the government said it was okay to do that, so people went with it. When the government said slavery was okay, people had slaves and went with it. When the government said slavery was wrong, they went with it. When the government said put Japanese people in concentration camps, they went with it. When the government said conduct a Tuskegee experiment, they went with it. Right now, when the government says let's kill brown people in foreign countries with flying robots, you're all going with it. So the government became moral arbitrators because you're a bunch of fucking sheep and you obey whatever the government tells you to fucking do. So there's your answer to that. Then she goes on and there's a bunch of stuff here about, you know, men, maybe they really do believe that all men are created equal and women need not apply. And there's a bunch of stuff about how Republicans hate women and Republicans want to stop abortion. And, all, you know, th you've heard all this before. And here's the final two paragraphs. Uh, but the most outrageous consequence to all of this is that the very same lawmakers don't want to pay for all those babies born out of wedlock. Many to younger girls who have neither financial means nor a clue about how to care for a child. Some of them will be thrown out of their homes, if there was one to be thrown out of, because they got pregnant and disgraced the family. So these unprepared, not yet adults are very likely to need government assistance. And the welfare, food stamp, medical care rolls climb with every unwanted and unnecessary birth. And guess who's going to pay for all this? An urgent and logical question cries out to be answered. How do these people keep themselves from seeing the cause and effect here? Well, they do it the same way you neglect to see the cause and effect. You don't see the cause and effect that women get pregnant because they fuck. And women get pregnant out of wedlock because they fuck when they're not married without using birth control. And you fail to see the... You know, all of this shit that the Femme State is... The, all these leaps and convulsions that they go to about how we have to have sex education in schools because if we don't have sex education in schools the you know these girls aren't going to know how to avoid getting pregnant okay first of all the state runs a school so if there's no education if there's no sex education well there's no education either if there's no sex education in schools and that's the fault of the state but more importantly have any of these feminist statists ever heard of the internet i mean if you're a girl God, how can I fucking not be derogatory? If you're a girl, there's a 97% chance you're just fucking stupid because you're a girl. But if you're a girl and you want to not have a baby, have you heard of this thing called the internet? And no, the internet isn't birth control. Well, actually it is because the more time spent, the more I can't fucking talk. Come on, brain. I'm trying to podcast here. Fucking get with the plan. The more time that men spend on the internet downloading porn, that's the less likely it is that women are going to get pregnant. So in a way, the internet is a form of birth control. But if you're a chick and you want to have sex without getting pregnant, have you heard of this thing called Google? Google it. How to have sex without getting pregnant. 
I haven't actually tried that, but I bet it will come up with ideas for birth control. It'll probably come up with some weird shit too, like stand on your head. No, wait, you stand on your head to get pregnant. Yeah, I mean, fuck. The cause and effect here is that unwed mothers who are too young to raise children, well, it's because they're having sex without birth control when they're too fucking young. And the idea that the solution, this is the statist part of the femistatist, the idea that the solution always has to come from the government, the people whom you're sitting here going, oh, why are they the moral arbitrators? Well, I mean, fuck, you, can't, you bitches can't even provide your own birth control. I mean, how did women get abortions before the government paid for it? Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck. Come on. Stop being so fucking stupid. What am I saying? They're femistatists. They can't stop being stupid. Then we have this piece of silliness here about, let's see, Nashville, Tennessee, Republican U.S. Representative Stott Des Jarlingas or something. Who opposes, opposes abortion rights? Whenever somebody says, remember, whenever someone says abortion rights, what they mean is having abortions paid for by somebody other than the person getting the abortion. Anyway, yeah, he and his he and his wife made mutual decisions. His wife had two abortions, and now he opposes abortion. Oh my God. And the reasons for the abortion was the first one is because she was on an experimental drug that carried potential risk in pregnancy. And the second one came when they were having relationship problems and she was having sex with other people. So it was somebody else's fucking baby. Why is it for femistatists that abortion is this holy grail of wonderfulness that should be celebrated and women should pretty much be forced according to the femistatist policy, or the feminazi policy, excuse me. There is a slight difference between feminazi and femistatist. According to feminazi policy, abortion is the most wonderful thing in the world. It should be celebrated. It's like a rite of passage. Like every woman should undergo multiple abortions because it's her right to do so. So, okay, so the bitch had two abortions. What's the big fucking deal? Isn't that what your entire movement celebrates? And of course, now we're talking about choice. And I've been through this before. You don't support a woman's choice to be a housewife. You don't support her choice to not get an abortion. You don't support her choice to smoke marijuana. You don't support her choice to have a drink of wine, have a glass of wine, and then drive her car down the street without getting harassed. You know, you don't, and just, you don't support, if she's a brown woman, and she's in a car, and she's sober, and she's in Yemen, and she's driving to somebody's wedding, you don't support her choice to not be murdered by a missile launched from a flying robot under the orders of your Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama, the first affirmative action president and the second coming of Jesus Christ. So whenever I hear some fucking filthy, nasty feminazi telling me about choice, I know she's a cunt, and I know she's a piece of shit, and she's probably fat and probably has short hair. Here's a magazine article about memes, memes, however you want to pronounce it. Internet memes, you know, like the, the, the cats and stuff. A magazine article about memes. Okay, I'm, I'm just throwing that out. Oh, here's a good one. Cleveland, Ohio, the man who imprisoned three women in his home, subjecting them to a decade of rapes and beatings, pleaded guilty Friday to 937 counts in a deal to avoid the death penalty. Ariel Castro told the judge he was addicted to pornography and had a sexual problem and had been a sexual abuse victim himself long ago. Quote, my addiction to pornography and my sexual problem has really taken a toll on my mind, unquote, he said. However, imprisoning and raping three women for some period, a decade, for a decade, didn't take a toll on them. And now, of course, this piece of shit will be kept alive at the expense of Taxpayers, remember earlier, just I talked about the market. I talked about how people who actually produce value for others are the ones who get rich. Those are the ones who make money. That's how you make money without using violence. So now all the people who are creating value for other people and exchanging value and making money, 
we're all going to pay taxes to keep this piece of shit alive. And this is, I've talked before, I'm pretty, I think I did a whole podcast on this, or at least most of a podcast, about the criminal justice prison industrial complex. And of course, the justice part of that is a joke. Shoot the motherfucker and be done with it, but no, 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 no. We're going, we, we, your democratically elected government, the arbitrators of morality, are going to keep this piece of shit alive. They're going to keep him healthy. They're going to keep him fed. They're going to keep him heated in the winter and cooled in the summer. And think of all the, you know, for those of you out there who are fucking tree huggers, think of all the environmental destruction done by the prison system. Think of all the construction, all the fuel that goes into that, all the resources, all the food, all the clothing, everything that has to be manufactured, everything that has to be transported to the prisons in trucks that burn fossil fuels that cause global warming. Oh my God, which doesn't exist, but we're pretending it does because you cocksucking fucking environment. Let's pretend that you care about the earth and that global warming is real and all this other shit. But then... Instead of taking this motherfucker and killing him, as he deserves to have done to him. Oh, but he's an addict. Oh, we can't. We have to try to help him. We have to talk to him about his feelings. He's addicted to sex and he's addicted to porn. It's computer pornography made him the way he is. We need to shut down the internet. Because the internet is, the pornography on the internet, that's what's responsible for this. He's not responsible for his own actions. No, of course not. Internet porn made him kidnap those girls and lock them in his home for 10 years and repeatedly rape them. Apparently, according to this, one of them had a baby by him. But it's not his fault. No, no, no. He, he should be fucking locked up and, and catered to and kept in a nice, clean cage. That's what we should do. That's justice. You people are just really fucking stupid. You're really, really fucking stupid. Meanwhile, people in Yemen who are simply driving to a fucking wedding get murdered by your Lord and Savior, Hussein Obama. And oh, he's he's the fucking Messiah. He gave us free health care. He's going to make sure women get their right to an abortion because that's what's really important, right? The fact that this guy raped and imprisoned these women for 10 years, that really doesn't fucking matter. If he would have simply provided these women with abortions, he would have been fucking hailed by the feminazi movement as a fucking Martin Luther King Jr., as a fucking Hussein Obama, as a Rosa Parks, as a John Kennedy He imprisoned those women and he provided them with abortions. He made goddamn fucking sure they got their right to an abortion. Oh, he's a prince. He's a prince among men. Speaking of sick shit, babies, and honey boo boo, this is, this is, what the fuck is wrong with you people? This is an advertisement. For the commemorative baby doll of the the, the 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 William and Catherine, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, welcome their son Prince George. It's a fucking doll of Prince George from England. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Who are you people that would buy a doll that looks like the baby? of someone else, and more importantly, somebody else who is a a fucking king and a queen or a duke and a duchess. I mean, again, and then, well, how does the government become the arbitrators of morality? It's because you sheep need someone to look up to. It's because you can't think for yourself. There are actually people out, I'm assuming some, assumption, I know. I'm assuming that at least one of these was purchased. I have no proof of that. I have no evidence of that. May, may God help us, maybe nobody bought any of these, but I gar- I'm willing to bet that the fucking honey boo-boo demographic fucking snapped these things up like a motherfucker. What is wrong with you people? That you would buy a fucking doll that looks like the baby of some fucking royalty people from England. 
And the answer is, as I've already said, it's because you sheep need someone to look up to. This is why I believe, because a lot of people would argue in the ANCAP movement, a lot of people would argue, and I, I think there's some truth to this, okay, that in their natural environment, this sort of, this need for the leader, this need for the holy man. Well, I'm going to say that because you look at the primitive tribes. They have like their shamans and stuff like that. But the shamans usually have to do something to become the shaman. They have to put up or shut up, right? And you have the, may have a village chief, but again, typically they have to put up or shut up. They have to actually do something, be there. They keep that position by displaying their prowess. And you have the village elders, who are the old people who have lived a long time, who have wisdom, people go to them for wisdom. And a lot of ANCAPs, and I would include myself in this, say that humans, if they, we were in our natural environment, if we weren't packed into cities and we didn't have a state and we were living more naturally, we would not have these needs for sociopathic leaders to tell us what to do because we're too stupid to know what to do. But just like if you take animals and you put them in a cage, it changes their behavior, and it does. Animals in a zoo, animals in cages do not behave the way they do in a natural environment. It's just a fact. And humans are, oh God, fucking brace yourselves. Humans are animals. Okay, I was reading an email that popped up, sorry. Humans are animals, and just like any other animal, when you take humans and you put them in artificial environments like cities, like cages, like prisons, you're going to change their behavior. I mean, why do you think there's so many men being raped by other men in prisons, but you don't see as much, and of course there's a lot of men being raped by other men in the military. The military, the prisons, in a lot of ways they're the same. I've been in the military, haven't been in a prison yet. I will be at some point. The government will lock me up. We've already covered that. Because doing this podcast is hate speech and terrorism and everything else. Just standing here talking makes me very dangerous to the state. So when you take humans and you put them into unnatural environments, it modifies their behavior. And our behavior is sufficiently modified that you people out there can't function. And I used to be like this myself. You can't function without having some higher authority to appeal to. For some people, of course, that's God. But then, of course, God's word manifests in the realm of Republican politicians or in the realm of the preacher man or whatever. So it still ends up manifesting as another human. And for those of you who are left-wing statist, you know, it's Hussein Obama or whatever person is currently anointed by the liberal left. And that's the person that you get your moral guidance from. And that's why people will spend money to buy a fucking doll that is a replica of the baby had by a Dutch and a Duchess on the other side of the fucking ocean. Because you so desperately need someone smarter than you, more powerful than you, to tell you right from wrong and to tell you good from bad and to tell you what to do and what not to do because you can no longer discern these things for yourself. Going through the pile, I run across something that somewhat fits in. I also found another E. Jean column, which I can't really do now because I don't have time because I'll probably just go crazy. Anyhow, so next time, E. Jean, more, next, <clears throat> more E. Jean next time around. Sorry about that. All right. And this is just a picture. It's two, what are these? Male cheetah cubs that they were born in Virginia in a zoo. And it just spurred my thinking because I was just talking about how being in a zoo alters the behavior of animals. How being in a cage alters the behavior of animals. And how humans are animals and how we are in cities and all these other non-natural environments. And you have to wonder too, how is being in different environments like this affecting human reproductive cycles? If you, I'm reading the book Sperm Wars right now. And there's some stuff in there that I already knew and some stuff I didn't know. But, you you know, and then like with the whole abortion thing and birth control and, and single mothers, you know, if you can put aside your fucking whining about free abortions and shit and just try thinking about shit biologically. Like before, you know, before 
you got birth control by taxing white men who work for a living. And even now, like in the native cultures down in South America or wherever, I mean, what do they do for birth control? How is it that, you know, if this whole thing about how easy it is for a woman to get pregnant, if every time a man sticks his dick in a woman and she gets pregnant and spits out a baby every nine months, well then why aren't these people overrun by children? Or maybe they're not fucking, I don't know. But I'm not saying I have an answer to this, by the way. This is one of the moments where I'm raising a question and those of you who aren't stupid might think about this. The question is, how does our society, how does the state, how does living in cities, living in huge groups of people, again, you've probably heard this before, the sort of ideal size for a human community is 150 to 200 people. They've seen that over and over, studying various indigenous peoples around the world, their tribes, their villages. 150 to 200 people on average is what seems to work. When you get over that, you start having problems and you start needing the state. You start needing some figurehead to tell you right from wrong because there's something that happens to the human animal. When we get in a group of over 200 people, that the average human who isn't an ANCAP starts to become completely fucking stupid and can no longer distinguish right from wrong. So there's obviously some kind of mental transition that happens. There's a psychological transition, but you have to wonder too, how much of this is because of the physical side? Again, like I said, animals, I remember seeing tigers in this cage in a zoo and they were pacing back and forth. There's a name for that behavior. I can't remember what it is, but it's not natural behavior. Animals in zoos exhibit behavior they don't exhibit in the wild. The same thing happens with humans because again, we are fucking, we are animals. We're not fucking animals. Well, some people are fucking animals. It's called bestiality. That's a debate right there. When I was in animal rights class, one of the people wrote a paper defending bestiality. So there's a, you know, there's a topic to throw out and think about. Is it right or wrong to fuck animals? So we're not fucking animals, but we are fucking animals. So how does a non-natural environment affect our behavior and how does it affect our reproductive drives, our reproductive cycles, our reproductive behavior? These are questions that one person, an intelligent person would think about these. There's, most of you just start screeching for more free abortions because that's what you pass off as thinking. It really seems like I talked about this before, but <clears throat> since we're talking about the Broncos, oh my God, the Broncos, oh, they're going to the Super Bowl. This was, this was like two years ago, but the NFL, you can't, into the NFL games, you can't take a big tote bag anymore. You're only allowed clear plastic vinyl or PVC bags, no longer than 12 inches by 6 inches by 12 inches. And you have to be have it inspected at the gate and all this other shit. I don't know if that's actually in effect, still in effect. I don't go to football games because I'm not. I'm just gonna. I'm not gay. Watching a bunch of men in tight pants running up and down a field, chasing a ball and touching each other's butts, isn't really my idea of a good time. And while I don't mind watching a college game on television because I do like college football better than the corporate football of the NFL. I mean, I'll watch a game on TV if it's there and I'm not doing anything, but the idea of paying money and going out to do that, it's like, uh, God, I can think of a lot better things to do with my time. Like, for example, podcasting and talking about how the NFL is rigged and people who like football are gay and therefore offending huge numbers of people and getting lots of hate mail. And remember, your hate mail will get individualized attention if you're a cute girl and you send a picture of yourself in a volleyball uniform. Just wanted to remind you of that. I just found an article here about the Plan B contraceptive. That's the morning after pill, which is so incredibly disgusting, pathetic, that I have to save it so that I can go off on a long rant. But it's going to be good. So that will be appearing next time along with the e Gene column. So come back for the next podcast. Here's a big giant newspaper article about how this man who was a commander of a Nazi unit in Nazi Germany, of all places, imagine that, now lives in the United States. And of course this is bad, okay, because the Nazis killed Jews. 
Well, hold it. Hussein Obama lives in the United States, and he kills brown people. Oh, but wait. He's black. Actually, he's half black, as E.T. Williams is constantly reminding us. And when people say you're being racist when you criticize Obama, he says that you should just point out that you're criticizing Obama's white half, not the black half. So I'm not racist for criticizing Obama for murdering brown people. No, 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 no. I'm criticizing Obama's white half, not his black half. Hussein Obama lives in the United States. I don't see a fucking giant entire page. It's a full page article about this guy who is a Nazi who now lives in the United States and how he needs to be you know, attacked. He needs to be rounded up. He needs to be punished. What the fuck ever. I don't see anybody giving a shit about Obama. Who are all the people murdered by flying robots? All the people murdered in the war on terror, all the people being raped in prisons, all the people being murdered in the war on drugs. Don't Nobody gives a fuck about them. Fuck no. Mm -mm, not a bit. But shit that happened, you know, and this is the other thing about, well, that that happened a lot. We should ignore a thing. We, we, those things happened in the past. We can ignore that. Well, World War II happened a long fucking time ago. If we can let go of shit like exterminating the Indians, like putting the Japanese people in concentration camps, Tuskegee experiment, Waco, we're you know, supposed to forget about that. Well, those were right-wing religious fanatics. It's okay to kill them. Oh, wait. Wait, the Jews were religious also. So, wait. You can kill religious people in Texas and burn their children to death, but if you kill religious people in Nazi Germany and burn their children to death, that's bad. But when you burn religious people to death in Waco, Texas, that's okay. Hmm. Wow. I, I guess I must be the stupid one here. That's the only thing I can think of. Obviously, I'm just not smart enough to understand why some people deserve to die and other people, such, for, such as, for example, people who held three women in his home for 10 years and repeatedly raped them and held them prisoner. See, now that person doesn't deserve to die because that person needs a nice, comfortable jail cell, you know, magazines, books, television, cable, clean clothing, food. That person should be taken care of and celebrated and given help. But, but yeah, when you're in a member of the state... When you're in the government and you burn children to death because their parents are religious, that's okay. Yeah. I think it's starting to make sense now. Hold on. Yes. Oh, now it all makes sense. Those children were burned when a person who's a Democrat was the king of the United States. Duh.